If you're thinking about buying a pre-owned vehicle, here's some things to think about. I met recently with Brian Benoit at Anchor Nissan and learned about their process of evaluating a used vehicle because there's more to it than meets the eye. Brian, what are you doing there? What is that thing? Oh, uh, this is a uh, this is an electronic paint meter. Paint meter. Yeah, this is this is kind of a cool device. This is the first thing we do when we start inspecting a car that's a potential trade-in. See what it does is it measures the thickness of the paint on a car, the mills of thickness of paint on the car. And I know you're asking, oh, you're wondering. Oh, I think I know where you're going with this. Yeah, you're wondering why I'm measuring the thickness of the paint. Well, here's the thing. It's an easy indicator for us to find out if there's been any aftermarket paint on the vehicle, which could be an indicator of an accident. So that's the first thing we're looking for. So at that point, does that trigger you or one of your guys to think, maybe there's been an accident here, maybe it's been something structural, maybe not, but you're certainly gonna go digging. Sure, yeah, that, that certainly puts up the red flag. That's not the only thing we look for for paint work. We measure it, and then we're also looking for overlapping paint lines and things like that. But once we found something, now we have to go try to find out what's the root of the paint work. Now you could have a little you know, bump with somebody in a parking lot, that's not a big deal. Or you could have a structurally damaging big accident where panels are being replaced and the structural integrity, the strength of the car is now in question. And if you don't find any paint difference in terms of the thickness, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean you stop there and go, okay, this car is good to go. You still have a process. Absolutely. Um, you know, and a lot of people would say, hey, why don't you, why don't you just pull a Carfax and, and, you know, put an end to it. Um, you know, Carfax isn't going to show you everything. Um, in a lot of cases, they miss a lot of things. So most people have the same, the same concerns when they're, when they're looking at a pre-owned car. There's, there's basically three concerns. Has the vehicle been hit? And unfortunately, most of the decision on that is, is hanging on a Carfax in most people's minds. But has the, has the vehicle been hit? Uh, am I buying someone else's problems? And am I getting a good value? Based on the condition of this car, am I getting a good value? That's, that's everybody's concern. That's my concern. That's my concern when I'm looking to buy a car. Can I provide that? Can I provide a car to the next consumer that hasn't been hit, um, that isn't wrought with, with issues and problems, that can serve the customer for, for many, many years, and are they, getting, are they getting a good value? And a lot of that value question comes in, what is the condition of the car body-wise and structurally? But we also have a process from our, from our appraisers to our managers to our um, technicians who prep the vehicles to look for structural damage. We all know how to do it, both on top of the vehicle and underneath the vehicle. So once we've established that the vehicle is structurally sound and it's a vehicle that we would put our own families in, then we're comfortable going to the next step, which is the mechanical assessment of the vehicle and cleanliness of it, value of it, and so forth. There are people who look at the car thoroughly, find out the pros and cons to the car and choose to maybe ignore some of the cons, but not so good people in the business. And then yes, there are people who just don't do the job thoroughly enough because they rely on other things, things like Carfax reports, uh, vehicle history reports that give them what I call superficial information and maybe lull them to sleep into thinking this car is more than what it might be. Clean Carfax, call it a day, that customer is probably going to be fine with that. Right. Legally, I'm potentially covered. I've, I've done my due diligence because I've run the VIN number on a computer and the information coming out of that computer says this car is okay. There's no way that all the information that you need to know about this car can be gained by running a report. And those reporting sources, Carfax, Auto Checks, all of these types of sources will readily tell you that if you actually read the disclaimer on their reports. They'll tell you that they can't find all the information and you should do your due diligence when you're looking at a pre-owned vehicle. The problem is with all the hype in the commercials, it's kind of gotten everybody thinking, as long as you show me the Carfax and everything's good on the Carfax, I'm good to go. If, if that power window stops working, we can put a brand new power window motor in that, and it's back to new condition. If this vehicle is, is damaged structurally, there's no coming back from that. If I'm not comfortable putting my family in this car, I certainly wouldn't be comfortable asking you to put your family in the car.